So our, Stoke is uh, using an RNA medicine-based approach. So we target RNA in the cell. Just to remind everybody, uh, there is DNA in the body that codes for messenger RNA. And that messenger RNA tells a cell how to make certain proteins. And those proteins then get used for the cell to function. Now, in what we have found is that the mRNA, the messenger RNA in the cell, has certain signals in it that tell the cell to degrade that messenger RNA before it even goes on to make protein. And we've identified a way using what we call our Tango technology to remove those signals and allow for more of the message to be present, which then allows for more protein to be made. So this Tango technology uses short pieces of RNA itself. So the RNA, we introduced RNA, small pieces of RNA into a cell. It goes to the large messenger RNA, removes that degradation signal, and allows for more RNA to be present in the cell. For Dravet syndrome in particular, we are using now an approach that, again, targets the messenger RNA for this MAV 1.1, the sodium channel subunit. And we have identified in the messenger RNA from the SCN1A gene, we have identified one of these degradation signals and we devised STK001 to remove that signal and allow for more MAV 1.1 protein to be made. And then this will allow for restoration of the NAV 1.1 levels, potentially back up to normal in the, in the nerve cell. And that can then essentially reverse the cause of disease. So here for, for the field, this is a very important approach. This is a, a precision medicine approach because we are now treating patients based on the actual genetics that, that each individual person has. And in the case of Dravet syndrome, we can identify that they have this particular uh, a mutation in the SCN1A gene. And then we can now have a medicine targeted to increase the, the NAV 1.1 protein. Importantly, I should add that there are, in, there have now been several thousand variants, changes in the SCN1A gene that can cause Dravet syndrome. SDK001 is designed to work on the non-changed form of the mRNA. And therefore we can use one medicine, SDK00 alone, despite whatever number uh, mutation is identified in a patient. So it allows for one medicine despite a large number of variants that may be causing the disease. In the case now of SDK001, we have generated data first in animals that has shown that when we administer SDK001 directly to the brain, we can increase these NAV 1.1 protein amounts in the brain itself. We've shown that now in several different animal species. We've also looked in an animal model for Dravet syndrome. This is a mouse that's been genetically engineered to have the same sort of genetics that a patient with Dravet syndrome has. And these, these mice develop seizures and have precipitous death. And when we've given SDK001 to these mice, they have a markedly reduced number of seizures and uh, many fewer of them uh, die and have, they have much longer survival than normal. So. We've also shown that in those mouse brains, the NAV 1.1 levels went from half normal, which was causing all these symptoms in the mice, and which is, again, the case for people with Dravet syndrome. We raised those NAV 1.1 levels from half normal to normal levels in the brain. So again, showing that we can address the actual cause of disease. We've also now done testing that's required uh, in, in larger animals to look at the safety of, of SDK001. And we've progressed to now starting to test SDK001 
in people with, with Dravet syndrome. Uh, we have started a study in the United States called the Monarch Study. And in that study, we give uh, increasing levels of either single doses or three doses of SDK001 to children two to 18 years of age. All of these children have a, a SCN1A variant that's been identified. They've also had several medications in the past that they've tried to use to control the seizures and are continuing to have severe disease and relatively high levels of seizures when they enter the trial. We follow uh, each patient for four weeks before they get the treatment, and then we follow them for six months after their last dose. We're doing a similar study in the UK where we are giving three doses of the medicine to very similar type of patients. And we did release last year at the American Epilepsy Society annual meeting, some initial data from the Monarch study. In that set of data, what we showed was that doses from 10 milligrams up to 30 milligrams of single doses and three doses of 20 milligrams given of SDK001, all were well tolerated in the patients and there were no safety concerns identified specific to the study drug. In addition, we showed that when we look in patient's blood and in the actual spinal fluid that we obtained from the patients at the level of SDK001, we could predict what levels those patients were having. And the levels that we saw there in the patients were very similar to the, the levels that we were seeing in the animal studies, which allows us to use the animal results to predict what's going to happen in people. And then we also did look at the seizure levels in those patients. And what we saw was that as we gave higher doses or more doses of SDK001, we were seeing that on average by group, the patients were having fewer seizures compared to their baseline levels. And when we saw up to, as a group, a 37% reduction in seizures at that 20 milligram group where they got three doses. We also showed that uh, in, in younger patients, they seem to be responding or having a, an effect of the medicine earlier than older patients. But even in older patients, when they were given a higher levels of drug or more of the medicine, they did start to show a potential response. Having said that, these are still in relatively small numbers of patients with um, just trends being shown. And we need to reproduce these effects in larger numbers of patients. And we are also now testing in higher dose levels. So we have now uh, dosed in the Monarch study in the United States, we have dosed patients all the way up to 45 milligrams with those three doses. And in the UK study, we have already uh, begun dosing at the 70 milligram dose level. So we have been able to get to higher and higher doses. And uh, we do have safety reviews of all of those uh, patients' data to, to make sure that as we go to higher and higher dose levels, uh, the safety committee is looking at the data and recommending that they agree to go to those higher dose levels. So those uh, those studies are ongoing right now, and we're uh, intending to release data sometime in the fourth quarter of this year, where we will be looking at some of those higher dose levels and, and especially focused on the safety and the pharmacokinetics, but also looking at the seizure effects at those higher dose levels. Mm -hmm.